and never forget this as long as you live. The struggle itself is a sign of life. The struggle itself is a sign of life. I have a very good Christian friend. I can't name him because I'm afraid he's going to hear this sermon one day. And I used to see him for years and years and years. And I, whenever time I'd see him, I'd say, hey, brother, how are you doing? And invariably, he would say, I'm struggling. I'd say, hey, okay. And then I would see him again a week later, two weeks later. I'd say, hey, bro, how you been, man? How are things? I'm struggling. All right. And he was always talking about his spiritual experiences. I'm struggling, David. And, and okay, fine. So you're struggling. But this was the thing that bothered me. He always communicated this as if it was bad news. Are you with me? Yes or no? He always communicated that, that his struggle was bad. Beloved, revelation. I have news for you. Unconverted, unrepentant sinners don't struggle with their sin. Are you with me? Yes or no? In the first 23 years of my life as a, as a purple-haired punk rocker, I didn't have any struggle with my sin. If I had a struggle, it was how can I do it more? Are you with me? Yes or no? Can anyone here relate? I mean, the, the struggle was, man, I, I wish I could stop sleeping so I could go sin some more. <laughs> Beloved, think about this. The struggle with sin doesn't begin until conversion. And some of us are struggling. Oh, man, I'm struggling. Oh, I'm struggling. Oh, I'm struggling. Beloved, if you're struggling, you should praise God. Because the struggle itself proves that there is something in you that wants to go opposite to the way that your nature and your carnality and the world and the devil is taking you. Somebody forgot to tell us that the struggle itself was a sign that something was happening. The Bible says a just man falls seven times. It doesn't say the just never falls. It says the just falls seven times. Why does he keep falling? Because he keeps getting up. And beloved, that is the secret to succeeding in the Christian walk. Keep getting up. I want to tell you something. There have been many times in my life where I have come with trembling hand and tear-stained cheek and eye, and I have come to my Lord in the morning after I know I have let Him down the day or the week before, and I have opened the Bible, and I have hoped, and I have prayed that as I open Scripture that the verse is going to be there. And I go to 1 John. And I find chapter 1, and I look at verse 7, and it's there. And I look at verse 8, and it's there. And I glance down quickly at verse 10, and I notice it's there. And I think, Lord, I hope verse 9 is still there. Verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And I've got good news, good news for you today. Every time I've looked in Scripture, it's been there. It's always there. Beloved, the one time 1 John 1, 9 will not benefit me is the one time I don't go looking for it. The one time that after I've fallen, heaven forbid, I choose to stay down, that's exactly what the devil wants, is for you just to throw in the towel, to give up, and to stay down. Jesus didn't say that the righteous never falls. What he said is the righteous falls, but he keeps getting up. And when you get up, and beloved, we've all been there. Don't pretend with me. We've all been there. You get up and you, you have done that thing that you wished you hadn't done. You might have even promised God that you hadn't done, that you, you've let yourself down, you've let your family down, you've let your Lord down. You feel terrible. How many of us have been there? Come on. Every single one of us. And you know how it is. We like wait for God to like cool down. We're like, huh, oh, i got to get some distance between me and this sin. And so, not today, not tomorrow, you know, maybe 48 hours, I don't know how it is with you. You just wait a little while and finally you know your heavenly father's cooled down and now you can approach him? You know, we're kind of giggling there. He's like, huh, no idea what he's talking about. I have no idea. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Beloved, I want to tell you something. When you get up and you look at the vomit, the mire that if you, you have just been wallowing in, 
When you come on your knees to Jesus and you realize the only way you ever could or ever will be forgiven is by the blood of Jesus who hung on Calvary's tree for you, beloved, God does something in you and for you that you could never do for yourself. He begins to create within you a supernatural hatred and repugnancy for that thing. Some of us are trying to manufacture a hatred for sin. You can't manufacture a hatred for sin. You're crying out for sin. Your flesh loves sin. Your carnality loves sin. You can't manufacture some artificial hatred for sin. The only thing that can give you a hatred for sin is Christ and looking continually to Him on the cross because it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And beloved, I got good news for you. If you keep getting up, and you keep coming to Jesus and you keep confessing your sin, God will create within you an enmity, a hatred, a repugnancy, a revulsion for that thing that you used to love. And finally, in brokenness of heart and brokenness of spirit, you will cry out to God and you will say, God, I can't keep doing this. Deliver me from this once and for all. Beloved, I got good news for you today, and it's not because I read it in a book, but because I read it in the book of books, and I've lived it in my life. One of these days, if you keep getting up, you will get up from that sin for the last time. Amen. And you'll walk away from it. God has new vistas and new heights and new summits and new pinnacles that He wants to climb with you. But beloved, the only way to ensure that you're going to walk the Christian walk to its intended end is to keep getting up. Amen. There is a person or persons here today, there's not a doubt in my mind. It's impossible for there not to be someone here today to whom this applies because the congregation is just too loud, too large rather. Person here today who has been tempted to give up. Looking around, sometimes we can feel alone. We can feel like the Christian walk is working for everyone but us. And I believe in my heart of hearts that there is someone here today who has been seriously tempted and has been actually considering giving up. You have fallen, you have struggled, you have some situation in your life and you're beginning to feel that the easiest way to stop falling is just to stay down. Because if I stay down, I can't keep falling. You're tempted to stay down. But today the Spirit of God has spoken directly to you. And you have heard the voice of God speaking directly into your circumstance. And you've heard Jesus in the person of His Spirit saying to you today, My son, my daughter, don't give up. It's working for you too. Don't believe the devil. That's the same devil that said to my son, If you're the son of God, don't believe him. Keep getting up. Don't give up. Get up. 